Yo, what is up everybody? Welcome back to the Sports Goop. Today, I'm going to be ranking my top five edge rushers in the 2021 draft class. So before we get into this video, I just want to make sure that if you enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe. If you want to know more about free agency, the draft, any NFL content, we are there for you. We post almost daily, so we really appreciate it if you stuck around. But with that out of the way, let's get into the video. So one of the interesting things about this year's edge draft class is that there isn't like a Nick Bosa or Chase Young, that top dog really, who is um, kind of, we know that he's going to be uh, obviously a stud in the NFL. He's going to be obviously the number one out of this class. There isn't that guy this year. What we do have is, uh, despite the lack of top heavy um, players, a lot of depth in this year's draft class. There's a lot of very solid edge rushers who could be very good contributors to their team. I think when you go down top to bottom, this, the difference between first round talent and second round talent in the edge class is a lot less noticeable than it was in previous years, which makes this year's edge class very difficult and interesting to rank. And at number five, I have Patrick Jones II from Pitt. So Patrick Jones II had a very solid year. He had nine sacks in 11 games this year. And I think what when you look at him, I think what you think, um, well, we, well, this will be a common theme with a lot of edge rushers. He's very explosive off the edge, obviously, but he also has a very good motor. Again, very important for team. He was very consistent this year with Pittsburgh. I think some of the best um, characteristics of him is obviously as his speed, but also he's very has a very good bend off the edge due to his great uh, agility and physicality. So when you look at him. There obviously isn't the perfect prospect. That there's a reason why he's number five on my list. He has struggled with hand technique. His leverage isn't the best. So obviously he isn't gonna be step, someone who's gonna step in right away and be your number one edge rusher. However, I still think he has the potential to be one of the better speed rushers if he does get into the league with a good team around him. When you look at this, I think possible good destinations for him would include um, the Jets, the Browns, the Bills, the Falcons, Chargers, all teams who in my opinion have very solid coaching staffs and run four man fronts, which he is more accustomed to. I feel like Patrick Jones, again, not the perfect prospect. I feel like he could be very good if put in the right system. Now going on to our number four, I have Quiddy Pay from Michigan. Pay in 2019 had six and a half sacks in 12 games. And while he did play in 2020, he only played four games due to an, a nagging injury that really kept him out for most of the season. So I'm kind of almost not exactly discrediting, but more like wiping it off considering it's not really that important to really how good of a player he is. And I think when you look at Pay, I think you look at, he's kind of in the, uh, one of those athletic freaks. He, if you saw his cone drill time, he's very fast, but he's also has a great, a very strong. He has, um, obviously he can, unlike a lot of edge rushers, he can use um, tactics like the bull rush very effectively, which can also make him a very solid three technique or one technique in the NFL, which is very good. Problems include, he doesn't have that great bend off the edge. He isn't, doesn't have the best flick ability which obviously doesn't bode well for a very true good edge rusher which again his flexibility across the line does come in handy i think he, again he, also another problem is that his production for someone who's supposed to be a top tier um, nfl draft talent isn't um exactly impressive considering comparing them to the other names on the list he has a lot of physical talent he also is very intelligent there isn't much not to like except he hasn't really seemed to be done a great job yet putting um, that into good numbers for um, his team, Michigan. So with that being said, that's the only reason why he's number four. I feel like he could be very high or he could be the best edge rusher or maybe just plain old, just best rusher in this class. But at, at the moment, I have him at number four. Now going on to the number three, I have Aziz Ojolari from Georgia. Aziz Ojolari, he had a very good season this year, eight sacks in 10 games, capping the season off with a brilliant three sack performance in the Peach Bowl against Cincinnati. I think what, one of the things I do like about Ojolari is very good versatility. He can play, I mean, he can play, in, he plays in a 4-3 predominantly, but he can also play besides playing as a pure edge rusher. He can also play as off the ball outside linebacker, which is again, really bodes well for him. He has a very decent upside. I think he's got one of the things that a, a lot of people like about him is he has a very good first step as we saw again, in the, in the Peach Bowl, although he could, he can be sometimes prone to a lot of penalties. He's very good also in uh, um, in run defense. He can set the edge very well and, and provides great lateral quickness and flexibility, which again, bodes well for a lot of teams. 
one of the problems with him though is what we consider is that he has a tendency to be somewhat inconsistent and similar to others could use with the refining of technique team fits i've had for ojalari are the patriots jets vikings steelers and browns now going on to my number two pick i have gregory russo from a, the university of miami uh russo decided to opt out for the 2020 season but in 2019 had a mate an amazing season 15 and a half sacks in 13 games and you're thinking how the hell is he not number one and i'll get into that Rousseau, um, I think, again, um, out opting out for the 2020 season, although he'll still be a great prospect, likely didn't help his, um, t help his talent as much as it hurt it. I think um, one of the issues is that really did, again, provided a great help on the edge. He also did play a lot of time. A lot of his production came from the interior uh, due to his, again, just um, great use of another player who could use the bull rush very well and just great um, overall strength, but was didn't exactly provide uh, does maybe not the best pure edge rusher. I think um, one of the problems that people consider is that he's a very raw prospect, um, doesn't have the same elite speed as many other edge rushers in this class. That being said, again, I, I still said I think he easily has the highest upside, but I think um, also he, he can also go into multiple fronts, three, four, four, three, those both work for him. And I think if he does go to the right system, with again, good coaching, I think he could be a very good player. I think him and Patrick Jones are very similar in terms of the fact that they aren't the perfect prospect. They're still very raw, but they need to go to good coaching system, sorry. And I think again, similar locations, Broncos, Patriots, Vikings, Dolphins, Jets would be a good one if he's available there, uh, my favorite team. But I think um, all those destinations would be very good for Rousseau. And I feel like while he's not number two and you could easily make a case for him number one, I think undoubtedly he has the highest potential in this draft for an edge rusher. Uh, now getting into number one, I have Jalen Phillips again from the University of Miami. The reason why I have Phillips here is that really he provides, I think he has it all. I think he provides kind of, I think he's the safest pick. He, obviously he's not the uh, the same like Chase Young, Nick Bosa type of player, but I still think he's that type of guy who, I say the most reliable that he'll be uh, most likely to be a very good edge rusher and maybe a great one in this class. He had eight sacks in 10 games in 2020. He um, provides great explosiveness with also great leverage, which you don't see from a lot of the other edge rushers Has a very solid hand technique, very agile. And also you demonstrate of an ability to play, be a very versatile again, similar to Rousseau can play in multiple systems, three, four, four, three. There isn't really much to critique about him other than he has had some injury concerns like concussions he has had a few of that so hopefully that doesn't affect him and also maybe the fact that he can bulk up a little bit isn't exactly the strongest edge but other than that there's really a lot to like about him and and i've said this i think really with uh phillips there isn't really exactly one fit i think he's the type of player that really can go into any um he can be that edge uh not immediate edge one but he can be an immediate starter on that line which i don't think you see out of a lot of other players who are more de uh, developmental so that's why i really like phillips as the edge number one so i think the teams that are first really looking for the edge will probably snatch him up first like vikings patriots dolphins and titans so that's why i have him at number one i think he fits the bill for most teams that are looking for edge rushers so that's why I have him as number one. But that's it for the video. Again, if you enjoy, make sure to like and subscribe. We really appreciate it. We also have Kian, Dylan, and Charlie who are also making a lot of draft content. Uh, make sure to check out some of our other videos. We have player analysis. If you want to uh, see recaps on free agency, we have those types of videos. We break news. We do all that stuff. So uh, make sure to stay tuned. Hectic offseason so far. Thanks for watching.